I'd be remiss if we didn't talk SEC, of course, and yeah. it's a good transition just because you brought up Kentucky, and they seemingly started to round into form, at least offensively. Tennessee plus 160 to win that conference tournament, Auburn plus 250, Kentucky plus 400, Alabama plus 500, Florida plus 1400, A&M 40-1. There still are some bigger numbers out there, so be sure to shop around on A&M if you like. Their long shot potential over at the lines.com, Mississippi State 50 to 1. South Carolina kind of shows you where their the market perception is on the Gamecocks, despite their success and maybe Lamont Paris being a coach of the year nationally candidate. They're 50 to 1. Ole Miss 100 to 1. The reason why I brought up AM, and I know Kentucky had that huge upset win over Tennessee. Wildcats were able to space out the volunteers, which is what Derek and I talked about on Outside Shots last Friday here on the YouTube channel and Apple, Spotify, wherever you find your favorite podcast. But kind of to the similar tune of a Wisconsin. Now, a and isn't making the tournament or they're right on the bubble, but a team that is very experienced and has some high variance tendencies with their ability to space the floor and generate second chance shots. But going back to the three-point shooting, it hasn't been there for the most part this season when you look at the Aggies, but they have historical good, efficient three-point shooters in Wade Taylor and Tyrese Radford. So overall thoughts on the SEC really quick, Eric. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of Texas A&M. I think they've had that bad stint where they lost five in a row. They seem to come out of it okay, but I think that's going to be too little too late for them. Um, it's going to be interesting. You could potentially have Tennessee and South Carolina. I won't say that's exactly a – a, t- a, a tortoise game anymore. You know, Tennessee's picked up the, the pace a little bit, but you always, you, it screams a little bit more defense, obviously, than what could unfold on the other side of the bracket, which is going to be a full blown NBA all star game between Kentucky and Alabama. If I'm not mistaken, I think the score of that last game was 117 to 95. Um, just two teams out there that have, you know, completely matching fingerprints. Um, when it comes to offensive efficiency and defensive efficiency, like both teams are right around number eight offensive efficiency and then right around number 80 defensive efficiency. And that kind of thing, in my mind, screams first round upset in the NCAA tournament. Now, that doesn't necessarily translate to the conference tournaments. Offense can win um, without a defense can win you conference tournaments. But boy, I... I, I I really hate Alabama in the long term. I would not put a long term bet on on Alabama for the NCAA tournament. Could very well be wrong, but looking at the trends in the past, you got to have a competent defense. Kentucky has a similar problem. Kentucky sh- can shoot a little bit better than Alabama, but boy, um, for me, I'm this I'm kind of getting off on a tangent here, talking, getting ahead of myself, talking NCAA tournament. Boy, but boy, if there is a powerful team out there that I love to lose in the first round, regardless of opponent, it's Alabama. <laughs> I don't blame you. I kind of hope for my my sake of Clemson futures, Final Four futures, I don't have them to win the national championship, but Clemson has a big road win at Alabama, non-conference-wise. I'm kind of hoping that that win gets bolstered a little bit by Alabama, make it a run of the SEC tournament, but <laughs> that's just for selfish reasons. I don't, I don't, I agree with you there. Long-term outlook when it comes to the big dance does not look too optimistic. Maybe you win a couple games, but yeah. that's it. Looking at... Uh, Kentucky really quickly here. Reed Shepard being projected as a n- the number one pick, believe it or not, in the 2024 NBA draft. And what Kentucky did offensively over the weekend, they've won five straight games. Kind of an interesting team. Seven threes for Shepard, by the way, against the Vols. When, I wouldn't put them in the same context as Alabama, but poor-ish defensive metrics. Illinois, same regard. It's kind of like the previous Iowa teams of Luca Garza. What do you make of Kentucky's long-term outlook? Uh, probably sadly similar to Alabama. Like you said, it's not quite as I think they're they're not they don't quite have the defensive deficiencies that Alabama has. I think they're a better shooting team than Alabama. Um, but you know, just looking at some of these numbers and 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 it's so pedestrian across the board. And I'm I not only just the adjusted three-point percentage defensively, but also the three-point attempt rate. Three-point attempt rate defensively, 247th in the country. Defensive uh, adjusted three-point percentage, 149th. These are really pedestrian numbers. You get to the mid-range, it's not much better. They give up. It's fine giving up mid-range shots, and the mid-range percentage is 27th, but a lot of people avoid the mid-range. And then you get it in the inside, uh, the near-proximity attempt rate, 171st defensively. Near-proximity percentage, decent, but not great, 56th. 
78th overall in defensive efficiency. That's not not going to cut it. And that's the thing about it is, um, you know, I, I probably have a similar outlook to um, Alabama when it comes to Kentucky. I don't like them. I don't like them getting out of the first weekend. Maybe they get the, the beneficial matchups. But it's another team that I just have a, a real hard time trusting. On top of that, number 291 right now on my consistency metric. You don't know what you're going to get from, from them from one night to the next. They could go on a run. They can flame out early. We saw that a few years ago when I think number one and number two in consistency two years ago were Iowa and North Carolina. Didn't want to trust either one of them, so I picked them to lose on the first weekend. Iowa paid off. I actually had money line on that game picking Richmond, and Richmond wins that game. But North Carolina, I didn't think they were going to get out of the second round. I think they were going to they uh, they played Baylor in the second round, who was the one seed. They beat Baylor, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, they find their groove, win three straight, lose in the final. Um, so again, just because someone is inconsistent doesn't necessarily mean it's going to continue, but it does seem to be an important trend more times than not. I will defend Kentucky a little bit from a couple of years ago. A, because I had a national title on future on them at a big number. But you missed 12 free throws against St. Peter's. And Kellen Grady was dealing with plantar fasciitis. I think that was a couple of weeks before the NCAA tournament, the start of it. So that's what we talk about, though, with high variant situations. They got a lot of negative variants in that game, whether it comes to the conference tournament or NCAA tournament. Sometimes that's the way she goes in a one and done. Yeah, and that's it's really hard to say what it, what exactly is going to happen in any, any one of these particular games. Um, I just always look at that and, and say that that's where I kind of look. You know, when it comes to the NCAA tournament and picking these these conference championships and everything like that, I kind of use the golf analogy of uh, you know drive for show, putt for dough. One of the things I always used to consume myself with was who's going to get this upset in the first couple rounds. That's when I turn things around last year and I look in reverse and say, now I'm picking backwards. I'm looking at the teams that have the best fingerprint. I know right now already the four teams that I've got in my back pocket waiting for the NCAA tournament, regardless of matchup, because I'm going that route. And then anything else beyond that, I go and say, pick them as a way because you don't, you can't really trust these teams. I can't trust Kentucky. I can't trust Alabama in the long term. They may well very well get to the Elite Eight, but the money is made in the Final Four in the championship games. That's that's where you got to look for, and that's why I don't trust those two teams. Offense wins championships. That's great, but you got to have some defense, and those guys do not have enough in my book. <laughs> 